everyone, and thank you for tuning into my channel. If you're an OG, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Aliris, and I am the creator, owner, and founder of Janae Rose. And on this channel is where I share my entire bath, body, and home fragrance product making with you. So let's get started. So what's on today's agenda? We're going to be talking about some of the basic fundamental steps that you probably want to take when you're setting up for your own in-person pop-up marketing event. So let's get started. Step number one, we want to confirm and coordinate with the event sponsor and organizer. We want to make sure that our fees are paid, that they have us on their list of vendors. You want to confirm the date, location, and most of your organized sponsors and events will also email you out a map that shows you where you're going to be listed or where your spot is at the venue. And also, one important thing is you want to make sure that they've given you the correct size that you signed up and paid for. If you've paid for a larger space, you want to make sure that you were granted that larger space and or smaller space if needed. And number two, we want to promote, promote, promote. Many of the organizers will send out a complimentary promotion card and you can use this promotion card and post it on your social media to help promote the event and let people know where you're going to be and when you're going to be there. If they don't send out a promotion card, that's okay. You can create your own. I create my own promotion cards that I post on my social media at the beginning of the month. And I use Canva to create that. I usually create a calendar and I highlight the days that I'm going to be vending. And on the side, I will also put the location and times of that event. And when it becomes closer to that event, then I'll post another promotion card that kind of reminds everyone, hey, don't forget this Saturday, I'm going to be at this location and this time. And that also helps drive more people to these events because it's not just the organizer's responsibility to promote. It's also the vendor's responsibility to promote, to get the best turnout for that event. Step number three, this is when I gather my products that I'm going to be selling. I usually try to get a little bit of everything, but I do not take 100% of my inventory. That's just entirely too much to haul. Also, if you're like me, if you sell several different groups or categories, like I do bath and body soaps and butters and scrubs but i also do wax melts and candles um a lot of the events are jurid events and they limit the amount of vendors that sell certain products so if you if you're only accepted to do bath and body products make sure that's all that you bring don't bring the candles and and wax melts or vice versa now that we have an idea of what products and how many products we're going to be bringing to the event, let's talk about display and design ideas and or requirements. I usually van with a 10 by 10 tent and I have two tables that are both six by two. This is my basic design setup. But I also have baskets, risers, tiered shelving and foldable tier shelving as well that's separate from my table. And I use this to kind of help display groups of, of products or a particular theme. And I've also realized that having different levels and, and tiers has also been more attractive to my customers. I bring in a lot more customers using different layers and levels than I did when I was just vending in the beginning. And it was really low or almost flat. So that design idea is really crucial to how you drive traffic to your booth. You can either visually imagine how you want it or get a pen and paper and physically draw out what you want your booth to look like. Now that we've got a, a mental picture of what our display is going to look like, let's think about power and technology. Power and technology can include lights and 
other electronics that are crucial to either your display being seen or your display functioning or you having the ability to sell to customers. Not all events offer electricity. So me personally, I've adapted to using battery operated or rechargeable technology for my events. I love for my display to be well lit and bright and that also helps attract more customers, especially when some of your events are in a low lit area or at night. So what I did is I invested in some rechargeable lights that I purchased from Harbor Freight and they're brawn. And I love these lights because I charged them a few days prior to my event and they last for hours. And they also have two different settings. There's a dim setting and a bright setting. And they also have hooks on the side of the lights. And I use these hooks just to hang them on my tent. And I purchased four of these lights and I hang one on each side of my tent and it lights up the entire tent. I absolutely love it. So for me, this is a must have. Other technology that I use is my cell phone and my tap and chip pay from a Shopify. And these combined is what I use for my POS system. Other than this, I really don't use any other technology. And to follow technology, next on the list, we have charge, charge, charge. We want to make sure that everything is charged. We don't want anything to impede our ability to have a successful event. So for example, as I mentioned before, the lights that I use to light up my tent, I charge those a few days before my event. I also have a battery pack that lasts for hours and it can recharge my cell phone or my tap and chip. I also make that sure that battery pack is charged. I also make sure that my Shopify POS card and chip readers are charged. I have two of those. One of those is my primary and I use the second one for backup because if anything happens to that first one, I wanna make sure that I can just switch over to the next one without hurting any sales for that event. Okay, so we're nearing the end, I promise. For step number seven, I like to pretend that I'm the customer and I also like to pretend that I'm myself checking out my customer and I think about what type of supplies am I going to need to check out my customer. And this may include bags, candle care cards, business cards, promotion cards, flyers, tissue paper. It's all dependent on you, your branding, and maybe some of your requirements when you're selling certain products. Oh, and don't forget your cash and coins. Make sure you have enough change for those cash paying customers as well. And now step number eight. Some other things I like to take note of is the weather, temperature, or forecast. I want to know, is it gonna be storming? Is it gonna rain? Is it hot, cold? Do I need to dress warm for the event? Do I need to dress cool for the event? Do I need to bring my portable heater or my portable fan? Do I need to bring a blanket? All this is gonna come into play depending on the time of year, location, whether you're inside or outside. So that's going to change. However, that step is super important to your comfort and your success at your event. And last but not least, but what I think is probably the most important step is you. Take care of yourself. Get yourself a good night's rest the night before your event. And if you can, prepare for your event well in advance. Get everything put together and ready days in advance. This is gonna help alleviate some of that last minute stress that may occur or last minute changes that may happen unexpectedly. Make sure everything is charged. If you can, go ahead and pack everything up in the vehicle the day before, the evening before. So the only thing you have to do is wake up, maybe get a cup of coffee and some good breakfast get in your car and head to your event because you want to provide the best customer service that you possibly can. And you want to be able to perform 
at your best and take care of yourself physically and mentally. I think that covers everything on my checklist, at least the basics. If you feel like I've left anything out, please feel free to go ahead and comment below. Let me know how you prepare for your events or let me know if you have any questions when you're setting up for your event as well. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. I truly, truly appreciate all of your patience and support that you've provided. And this is all of my Patreons on all of my tiers. And if you want to join my Patreon as well, that link is going to be located in that description box below. And I'm also going to try to post a little checklist of the items I just went over. I'm gonna try to post this in the YouTube video, but if not, head on over to my Patreon and that's going to be posted for free as well. So you don't even need to pledge for that, but I just wanna go ahead and provide you guys with this checklist. If you wanna use it as a foundation for you to start on yours and hit me up if you feel like there's some much needed changes on that checklist. So thank you all for tuning in. Please like and subscribe if you like this video and also please hit that notification button so you can be notified anytime I post new videos and stay tuned because I'm going to post a short snippet of me getting ready for my event that I just had this past weekend. Until next time. Bye guys. <laughs> Two steps backwards, yeah. And much your lover who don't use big words, yeah. So I made a stop and got my coffee, my energizer for the night, and I am just pulling in now. I'm just waiting for a spot to open so I can park in front of my space and unload. I don't have much time to talk because I'm running a little bit behind schedule with traffic, but I'm going to put this tent up in the tables and then I'll show you guys how I set up my whole sponsor or organizer lets us keep our stuff here and they have security here overnight to watch it and when I say security I mean the actual city police so it doesn't get much better than that got everything set up the only thing I did was lower my tent I kept everything in place and there was a little um, moisture from the dew so I just wiped off my candles and wax melts and I am ready to go and I've got my blanket this time. Because I know what I want. Mm -hmm. Baby, dig deep. It's time to make a move on my heart. What's it gonna take for you to love? Take for you to love me. What's it gonna take for you to show? Take for you to show me. I've been trying to take it slow, but my patience slow. Think it's time you let me.